Welcome back party people. We are uh, we're out on a little camping trip today. We split those two trees there. The mirrors and the sideboards. A couple of hairs and some air from scraping. So we really did work it in there. D-Money's working on the fire as usual. We're gonna test out our diesel heater. It's supposed to get down to about 42 tonight. So it's not that cold. Fahrenheit that is. Not that cold, but uh, you know it'll feel good when we wake up in the morning. Probably seen these uh, seen these all over the YouTubes, but uh, I decided to invest in one of these uh, portable diesel heaters that you're seeing here. I actually got an extremely good deal on this. Everywhere I was looking on Amazon and other places were anywhere between 140 and 180 bucks for the same uh, controller, pump, and uh, tank and diesel heater configuration. But I went to Vavor's website they actually had a really good deal going right before Halloween. So I got this package for like 122, I think. So there's a close up on the tag there. So it's a Vavor uh, five kilowatt diesel heater. I decided to get this portable package here versus the kit where you install the heater, you know, maybe under the seat or wherever in the floorboard and then run your exhaust out. Because I like the portability of it, um, I've already used it in the garage one time. We may use it in our tent as well. I did a little test back at the house and uh, run it for seven hours uh, the other day when it was, uh, was about 45 degrees during the day, one of our coldest days yet. And uh, I was keeping the van on low. Uh, the van was staying at a cozy 73 to 74 degrees, which is more than enough. It's actually too warm, but uh, we'll have to control some of that warm air with the, the vent on top. You can see this is your your vent pipe here so this is where the warm air comes out and this will be routed inside the van this is our controller it has a little remote so you can turn the temperature level up or down not necessarily temperature level but uh, the uh, frequency of the the diesel pump and i've got these uh these different parts here i'll show you how this connects to the van in a minute up here i've just got this intake here so I'm gonna leave this unit outside and I've got a, another uh, rubber bin I put over the top of this to actually keep some of the moisture off. But uh, this is the all-in-one unit. So we have the case. So the, the diesel tank, it's a plastic tank on this side. The heater is on this side. And it's just mounted into this kind of metal casing here. The exhaust comes out the far side here. So there you can see the electrical connections on the back. Just a positive and a negative here. And uh, I've just got it run into a cigarette lighter connector down in my plug into the back of the van there. One thing I would uh, suggest is to get a model like this with the all-in-one is uh, take all the screws off the case, remove the case, and take a look at where your fuel pump's mounted at. The fuel pump is the thing that's actually pumping the diesel, and it's kind of a piston-type uh, fuel pump. If you look on the inside where it's mounted at here, this is the bolt that's actually mounted. It, mine was mounted kind of a caddy corner like this and the casing was laying across the hot terminal of the, the 12 volt input there. So I took that off, I repositioned it, I insulated it, put it back in. So yeah, um, probably would have never caused anything, but uh, just, just in case I moved that. What I wanna try to do is maybe get this unit off the ground, especially when we got all these dry leaves around here. Somehow get it off the ground. Maybe maybe I'll sit it on my bike rack back there. The exhaust gets pretty hot, at least this pipe does. So I don't want to start a, uh, an intentional fire here. So I've got to be smart about that, but, uh, but yeah. I've got my light on now. These daylight saving time hours. We don't have a lot of daylight now, but anyhow. Here's a closer look. At the front there, you can see the controller and the remote and the vent. I've got a little bit of aluminum foil wrapped around the exhaust down there. This is the vent for the heat, and this is where the heat's gonna come out. This is just a, you can, you can turn this to wherever you want it to. So that's our heat. Now this is the D pillar of the van. And there is a channel that runs all the way to the bottom of the van that is just big enough to hold a three inch 
vent hose, which is exactly what this particular heater uses. Usually just there's a black cover here, this black cover. I just uh, used a hole saw and cut a hole in and mounted this uh, vent here with a couple of um, cable ties. I just cut some slots in there and it's just cable tied to the van right now. Just as a test, will I mount it uh, more permanently in the future? Maybe, maybe not, um, if it works good enough. I have a piece of this pipe here that runs all the way down this D pillar in that inside channel. And there's a rubber, rectangular rubber grommet on the bottom where you can get access to the um, hollow inside of that D pillar. So I'll go up under van and show you that. And what I've done is just left uh, left a piece of this uh, this pipe with a coupler or this hose with a coupler on the bottom. And that allows me to just hand tighten this section onto it once I drop it out. And then I just connect the other side to the heater and uh, hand tighten these vent hoses. And that's how the heat gets into the van. I chose down low because obviously it's a very convenient given the uh, the D pillar set up in the van already and hot air rises. So I know a lot of that hot air is going to go directly to the roof anyhow or to the top of the van anyhow. So it's great that it comes out there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go show you how we connect uh, our hose up to the system. All right, so we're up under the van now, and here is the rubber grommet I was talking about for the uh, D-pillar. You can just use your fingers to uh, remove this, and uh, that will get you access to, I'm just going to put it right there, make sure I don't forget that, but you can see I've already got the hose kind of curled up in here. One piece wasn't long enough, so I uh, ended up using two, and what I just do is just pull this out. So I've just got a coupler here that's already left on here. And so it's real easy now to uh, to uh, connect my extension pipe to this. So I just uh, crank these hose clamps down with my hand here, my fingers. It's just perfect. Good enough to keep it nice and tight. And that's what we look like hanging out of the, uh, the rear of the van D-pillar there. Before I put all this stuff on, I usually uh, put this cover on to run my electrical out this hole I have here in the front. And so you can see I have a little exhaust hole back there. On this side is the intake. I just run my intake up here and it just has some Velcro on it. That's kind of what it looks like when the rubber container is over it. So now I just need to uh, connect the electrical and then find somewhere to sit this uh, heater. I'll show you how you can run your electrical. Um, if you don't want to use one of the, the holes, you can, you can actually run it up under the tail light here and uh, close the door on the rubber seal real easy and it works just fine. So I'm going to do that. Just gonna sneak it right up under this tail light here. You can see it kind of fits right up in there, like that. Sneak it under that tail light so it doesn't get crimped too bad. And then we'll come on this side here, finish sneaking it up into there. Now I've got a got a 12 volt outlet right here, so just gonna plug that in there. I might try to just sit it on the the bike racks. I definitely want to raise it off the ground. So uh, let me try to configure this thing. See if I can get it to sit up there safe enough where some animal doesn't come by and knock it off and uh, you know the rest. Some of these controllers are different. A lot of them are this type of controller here. So right now you can see we're on like setting number three, so I just turned it on. Once we get through the glow plug warm-up cycle, we'll hear the uh, diesel pump start and it'll ignite. And you'll hear that uh, very uh, meticulous ticking noise of the diesel pump. But uh, once it gets started, I'll just turn it down to H1. Yeah. So that's a typical sound. And you'll know when it's working. You'll hear it, you'll smell it. 
definitely don't want to be sucking that exhaust into your intake. So I try to keep the intake on the other side over there. This thing's going to ramp up. It's going to get really warm. Get the air coming out here. And uh, it's warm air already. Like I said, I've only got it on three. I suspect we're running on one tonight. You ain't got no signal? Again. I don't know, I haven't looked at my phone yet. If I help you, you have signal. I've got an additional video camera where I can look out the, uh, I think I showed this before, but I'm not sure, but uh, it's just kind of some, you know, a little bit of peace of mind. Um, yeah, I just have it tie wrapped up here right now so I can look at it when I'm up in bed, but uh, definitely helps out. I'm ready for a drink. Not you. Ready for a drink? Yup. I love the heat that this thing produces. Used to, when it got cold, what we would do, we would turn the propane heater on in the inside. Yeah, the problem with that propane heater is, well, first of all, you're burning up your oxygen inside the van. So you gotta make sure you've got your windows cracked quite a bit on each side. It's a little, uh, little buddy heater. And you go through one of those small cylinders of propane in probably three or four hours. And uh, this diesel heater, I run it for seven hours the other day and it, you know, it probably used a fourth of the tank that's in there. I don't know exactly how efficient it's going to be on the lower level, uh, but we'll see. I'm guessing we could probably get at least two nights out of that small tank that's in there. And the fact that that propane is converting that uh, oxygen into carbon monoxide, if, you don't, if you're not properly vented and your carbon monoxide detectors and the detector that's built into the heater, if all those things fail, you could potentially find yourself in trouble. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Double up, folks. Yeah, that's cool, right? Get your right, rear grate and then get you another one to put on top that you can move around to to your hot side or your cold side. I like it. What we got, babe? Got some mushrooms, some steaky, and our veggie tables, <laughs> or otherwise known as vegetables. This stuff right here is way too really. sweet. My light's running out of juice. It's like, uh, oh, there you go. All right, we're in, uh, <laughs> we're in bed, but you can hear the fuel pump. You hear it, the diesel pump, just slightly ticking. And I think that's because mostly we have it sitting on part of the vehicle right now. It's on the rack, so it's probably taking more than it would if we had it on the ground, maybe. Right, babe? But anyhow, what are we looking at right now? We've had this thing on low. We don't want it to burn ourselves out, but what's the temperature over there right now, babe? 66? When we first started, yep, yeah, 66. So when we first got in, it was 60. It was 59 point something. So I fully expect it to get up about 73 or 74 on low. We have it on the lowest setting it can go right now, so. All right, Sorry, something's wrong. Please try again. We'll take a shoe. All right, all right, good morning, party people. We just woke up. It's what time, babe? Almost nine? 8.51. 8.51, went to sleep at about 11. And it's 73 degrees in here, which is a little warm, but we had the uh, vent open, so it was like 70 most of the night. So it's still running, you can hear it. Worked out pretty good. It'd be nice if it if there was a, a thermostat and it would cut off and on by itself, but uh, at least we know we can get a good night in with one tank of diesel and uh, didn't have any problems with it cutting out or anything. So nice and toasty in here. I'm impressed with this diesel heater. It's probably a little overpowered for the size of this van. Let's see how much diesel we have left. So let's uh, let's crack this bad baby open. Let's lift this up. So this particular all-in-one on the diesel tank side, it has a uh, indicator here. So we can see the diesel here is is about half. So we could probably get two days out of this. We've had the door open, but the temperature is still 72 degrees in here. So it 
it hangs around. That's why having that uh, max air fan is good to just open it. You don't need to really turn the fan on, but just to open it and let some of that hot air out, it really equalized. And I guarantee you one thing, because I slept in this van when it was 19 degrees, it will reach equilibrium in there. And it's usually around three or four in the morning. It'll be 19 degrees inside that van if you don't have heat going. I don't care how good your insulation is. And I'm wondering if I can turn it off from inside, will it go through the van door? Let's try it. Oh, it worked. It worked. All right, so we're on off now. So it's gonna run through its cool down process. It basically just run some air through and cool everything off. All right, so yeah, there was our diesel heater. That was our first experience uh, camping with the diesel heater in the van. I say other than the noise and getting a little bit too hot at night and having to vent that out. Everything went as planned. So we're going to have some breakfast and then we're going to actually go uh, tear up these trails on the mountain bikes. Right, babe? Yeah. All right. We're going to call this a video. Till next time. Skill up and ride. Man up and go. Babe. Everybody need to plan B. That's right. You want to keep sleeping there? Cha-cha for now.